You know, last week when the market was in turmoil and everyone said uh, it was about maybe getting out of stocks, well, equity ETFs actually saw more money pour into them than bonds did last week. And then a bigger question that emerged, passive investing. I know you probably heard of it because many people are doing it, but are too many people doing it? Is it the biggest risk to this market? Pacer ETF's president, Sean O'Hare, joins me now. Sean, let's just start with the, uh, the, the trends, right? Because you, you, run, you have ETFs, you understand where the money is going, and they always say follow the money. I was shocked last week when more money went to the S&P 500 and to, and to the, uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average than into bonds because the narrative was, hey, get out of stocks now and get into bonds. Yields are going higher. They're more competitive and less risk. Well, I think that, you know, the, the, the issue with bonds is as rates rise, you lose money potentially in bonds. And so there's really not a, quote, unquote, true safe place to go unless you go to Treasury bills. So that may have been uh, some po folks who have been out of this market up until this point, using it as an entry point, getting a little weakness and putting a position on. In the meantime, corporate bonds got walloped. Yep. Uh, I mean, they, there was one corporate bond ETF that was down 17 percent. The assets under management dropped by 17 percent. Another one that was down 14 percent. What's going on there? I all, mean, all across that whole platform of fixed income ETFs, there was big outflows for the week last week. I think it's the fear of rising interest rate story and the rotation. What does that do for corporations? Though? I mean, if, if, they're corporate, if corporate bonds are starting to fall apart like this, because, you know, there's been a lot of bond funding for a lot of these initiatives, including buybacks. What does that do for the, the dynamics? So there's a big ecosystem, right? And so I should do my full and fair disclosure and say, look, I'm an ETF guy, Pacer ETFs, we're ETF guys, we're passive indexers, although we don't stay long in index on anything. We tend to create differentiated returns based on indexes. But what everybody forgets is that there's big money in mutual funds and there's big money in uh, open-end, actively managed mutual funds, and in particular in fixed income. And we watch the trend every every week. We have a big meeting at our company. We look at flows for the last, I don't know, how many but years. Why? What do those flows, flows out of you? actively managed mutual funds into passive ETFs, but flows into actively managed mutual funds on the fixed income side. So there's always some other place in the market. If you see liquidations on the ETF side in the fixed income space, there's yeah, another but, you place know, where it gets our, taken Most up. of our, our viewers aren't necessarily that sophisticated per se. You know, they, they've got a 401k, they've got their life savings in it. They've had a good run and they're concerned about that. These passive funds, many people are saying they're a ticking time bomb because when they unwind, it's going to get ugly. It's going to be a death spiral. Selling will beget selling. Is there any truth to that? I, 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 I liken that argument to guns killing people, right? People kill people with guns. It's not the gun's fault. I don't think it's the vehicle's fault. When the market goes into its next free fall, which will happen at some point, it will not be because of the vehicle, but it will be because of investor behavior. When there's a panic, there's going to be a panic, and people will start selling everything, including their mutual funds. It's $19 trillion in mutual fund, Charles. There's only $4 trillion and ETFs. That's where the big risk of falling prices comes all the time until they switch places. I'm getting a wrap, but I do want to know what you like, what you think could be market leadership, uh, because tech looks a little wobbly. We like the hard tech, which we talked about. We like stocks that have high free cash flow and high free cash flow yield. And so we like a small consumer discretionary basket of stocks like Macy's, Nordstrom's, uh, uh, Target, Polo, Ralph Lauren. Companies going forward that have huge fundamental advantage versus our comp competitors with regards to the amount of cash and cash flow they generate. All right, and, and I should point out to the audience, as much as we talk about tech, it only led the market two times in the last, uh, since 2009, last year and 2009, whereas consumer discretionary has led the market three times, including right now leading the market. So you might be on to something. Sean, thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Really appreciate it.